Okay, so nothing happened yesterday. Just um, those low flying helicopters. That was so weird and it's so noisy and they're black, they're solid black. You know, no sirens or anything like that on them. So I don't know, I'm not on any of the social media out here. So I don't know what the story is being told. I would think that some people would start questioning, but I mean, like people think, oh, this is just normal. <laughs> They're just checking the border. <laughs> so funny. Um, but yeah, the, the planes yesterday, that was crazy. And the helicopters, oh my gosh, that was so insane. And, uh, you know, getting the food box and stuff, uh, I was so surprised that it was in such good shape. <sighs> I was so excited. I thought I was gonna be opening this box. It was just full of rot. So I'm gonna order some more from the Misfit Market if that, um, you know, if it continues that we can keep ordering food. I don't know. We'll see how things go. There's no telling, you know, what what's gonna happen next. I think that whatever, there's groups of people who are trying to make sure that these shifts are, um, you know, not, uh, not like, um, too, too horrible or too difficult, you know, like I think that there's going to be some like more gentle shifting into, um, you know, where we need to be, uh, the stuff with the food, that's going to be really big. I think the medical thing won't be as big because of the med beds. So I think a lot of people will have no problem letting go of the pharmaceuticals and stuff and go in and actually heal their body you know that's what we all want we all want to feel better in our bodies right and we're fighting against all these toxins yesterday you know I did that box of the opening the box so you know I wanted anybody you know who was interested to see what happens you know that gets caught <laughs> if FedEx loses your package uh they said that they're losing all sorts of packages and when they're finding them that the dates are expired and stuff. So I don't know what's going on with FedEx. I mean, the kid that was out here talking to me didn't even look like he was out of high school. So I don't know what's going on with the, but all of our things are, um, you know, all of our structures are um, infrastructure. <laughs> it's no joke why he wanted to we got to work on the infrastructure. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. But, uh, you know, time's up. So too bad for you. <laughs> it's over for you. So it's the fall of the cabal. And we're going to be moving forward as humanity, mankind, conquers. It reminds me so much of the Planet of the Apes movies back when I was a kid. And speaking of old movies, oh, I wanted to say something else about the food box is so I had sent that to my kids because um, one of them was the one who had told me to start ordering the food from there. So I wanted to send them the thing of me opening the box so they could see the food too. Is anybody who wants to order, you know, wants to know like, well, what is the food really like? I mean, is it really crappy? Especially because they market it as being, um, you know, kind of like the ugly food <laughs> that nobody wanted. So, and, and it didn't look ugly to me and it looked fine. Um, I've definitely bought uglier. So, uh, um, uh, when I had did that, my daughter starts messaging me, oh my God, you got, uh, the salmon people are doing all of these, um, uh, videos of parasites in their salmon. And I don't know how they're getting them out. Like, I don't know what they're doing. I would, I would think that a parasite in your food would only be a problem if you ate uncooked food, if you cook it then it should kill the parasites. I'm more concerned about the toxins and the chemicals because even the toxins and the chemicals in our water, even if you boil it, there was a guy who, um, I'm sure you can look these tests up. He was recently doing them and going to all these different places and testing the water and you can boil and stuff and it goes down. There's like no water in it. There's no water in our water. It just is a bunch of chemical compounds and stuff. And that, um, and it just leaves kind of like, like I said in my teapot, it was always full of like, it looked like white dust. It started caking onto the sides, like it turned into like a cave or something when I was using the water out of the faucet. Now using this, the spring water or well water, it's, it's clean all the time. So yeah, they put so much chemicals and that's what worries me is the chemicals 
because you can see, I mean, yeah, if you ate some parasites, like, um, you, you know, and your body can handle it and you're battling these parasites, I mean, like, a uh, tapeworm is a parasite. People can live with a tapeworm. They'll be skinny because they're competing for food <laughs> with a tapeworm. The tapeworm would eat all the damn food up. But there was a point where people were taking tapeworms where women wanted to be skinny. And back in the 60s and 70s, man, you watch these movies, you don't see anybody who's overweight, <laughs> ever. I mean, these people are skinny. And that's how I remember people always being super, super skinny. And um, now, or then there started being where women were taking um, this pill and in the pill was live tapeworm. And then they would take it and then the tapeworm would grow in their stomach and eat all the food. So they could eat, but the tapeworm was eating the food. But the tapeworms would get real big. And the only way to get a tapeworm out is to um, stop eating, don't feed it, and then to bait it. Oh. So you had to bait it outside of your mouth and then you have to let it climb out. It's like, oh, hell no. They probably have other ways now, you know, all sorts of chemicals and just, yeah, you just take this, it kills the tapeworm. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyways, we've had, I mean, a lot of people live with parasites. And there was one that, that freaked me out like in nursing school because they were talking about pork and how important it is for people don't cook pork well enough and there's a lot of worms and parasites in pork. And, um, and then especially if you eat it raw or whatever, and there's something that, like in, um, China or someplace over, you know, in Asia where they have a delicacy or something of eating raw pork or something. I'm not sure undercooked, but, um, they get worms, some kind of worm. And it seems like they can go, they go into their brain and everything, but you can be standing across from somebody who has these, you can see the worms crawling around in their eyes, like <gasps> scary movie shit. Oh yeah. So, but I, I didn't eat pork. I had a pet pig too. And, um, so like, no, I would not eat pork, but I was really thinking about the, um, parasites, you know, then, and then, um, you know, like if you go to other countries, there are certain parasites. Like if <clears throat> you go to Mexico and drink the water, you know, you most of us will get really sick. The people there drink the water. They're not getting sick because they've built up to those different parasites. So they can handle drinking the water. We can't. Um, and then, you know, we'll get super sick. But if you were drinking it all the time, I guess you would build up you know, resistance to the different parasites or whatever, your body would be able to battle them because our body is so um, comprehensive and <laughs> it is um, so intelligent. And then it figures out how to survive. And, um, but you know, it needs the challenge too. That's why these people who are, you know, covering their face up instead of breathing in some germs and then building their immune system to fight the diseases that are, you know, we're being flooded with, not diseases, but the illnesses we're being flooded with, then, um, you know, it is your body that needs to be an optimum, you know, and when you're doing this, your body's not an optimum and you're, you're running on low fuel because your lung capacity and plus breathing in all of those, um, I mean, you talk about parasites and stuff, you're breathing in all sorts of bacteria and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's so crazy. It's, it's sad because you know how they're just using information and manipulating people. That's what's so sad. But anyways, the worms, I was thinking I might, I, at first I was like, well, I'm not going to go and look up at how to get the parasites out of the fish. I just bought all this fish. <laughs> I just got here. Like, I don't want to go in and gross out and then not even eat it. The piece I made yesterday was super, super good. It was really, really good. And uh, I didn't even do much to it. I just put the oil, uh, olive oil. Use a lot of olive oil if you read with Stephen Gundry. And um, so cooked it in the oil and then I added them some lemon and butter and garlic and salt and um, it turned out really, really good. Stella and I enjoyed it. <laughs> and um, so I don't know, I might, 
when I thought another piece C, I would imagine the parasites because like um, the farms, the razor fish are super bad. Um, you know, you think like, oh, farm fresh, that'd be better because in the ocean, they're dumping, dumping so many chemicals. I mean, they've got the, they still don't talk about all the radiation. They're getting out fish that are, you know, have radiation and stuff from that, that um, chemical spill, whatever it was. Um, was it like Hong Kong or something? Someplace over in Asia again. But it was, because um, they get a, that's why they wanted us to get our stuff made over there because they don't follow fucking rules. They just do whatever the fuck they want because the government, you know, is the CCP is in charge. They do what's best for them, for the aristocrats and shit. So whatever that was when that spill happened, it was pumping all that nuclear waste into the ocean. It got in the fish and stuff. And then there's a lot of things you're, and there's all this mercury you gotta be careful about the mercury. So anyways, we got, you know, they're doing everything they can to poison our food, you know, as part of keeping us sick. But the um, farm raised, I guess. So you think like, oh, well, okay, bring it, raise it in a farm, that'd be better. But they fill the water and stuff full of chemicals and antibiotics and all sorts of junk to try and keep the fish more healthy because it is like, there's no room for the fish to move. The, the, the farms are just jam packed. It's more like just water with a whole bunch of fish in it that, uh, you know, can't move around. So they're not healthy. They're, uh, and they're full of chemicals and there's something about something. You can look all this stuff up. Um, there's something about the chemicals that stay inside their, the fat or something, the part we eat. So it, it retains them. So I would imagine that it would be the farm fish that would be coming out full of um, parasites because they've got them in two smaller containers. Like, it's just like what they did with the chickens, you know? They keep getting busted in all this. What they've done with the cat, all of the stuff that they do, it's just, um, it's inhumane. It's not, uh, but they don't care because they don't, they only care about themselves. They don't care about animals. They don't care about nature. They don't care about us. We're animals. Oh, and it was so funny to you the other day. So these old movies, it cracks me up because there's so much disclosure and there's so much focus on, um, you know, telepathy and psychic and demons and rituals and all that stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, and I remember back in the seventies, like, like I've said, I remember my um, aunt and uncles, you know, practicing telepathy and psychic abilities and all this stuff because it was super popular. And then what happened? I think that they were like, oh, we got to be careful. These people might figure out who they are. We better turn this ship around. <laughs> and so, you know, started doing something different with our programming and stuff. But um, another thing with these... Um, movies what was it? it was something i saw yesterday um there was one this morning that this line that she said it was like so good i had to do a short because i know that's where uh, most of us feel no no matter what everybody thinks the other person's hypnotized everybody thinks okay these people aren't seeing the truth but i'm pretty sure i've seen the truth i'm pretty sure i'm telling the truth so um what was it with that um, other thing? Ah, I can't remember. Hopefully it'll come to me. Otherwise I'll just have to go in and it'll come to me and I'll be like, oh, I gotta go tape again. What else man talk about? <laughs> um, oh, and today it's supposed to be snowing again. Now it's the beginning of February, which, oh my God, I can't even believe we're, going, we're through a month of 2022. This is just so crazy. Uh, and, you know, their year was supposed to be up, which I didn't even know, you know, a government could come in here and have a year to take us over. <laughs> you get a free year. You can take them over. If you get them, if you get them taken over in a year, they're yours. <laughs> I was like, who wrote that rule? You know, we're not property. God, that is the thing is we are, we've been treated as property and it's our time to say, hey, <laughs> you don't own me. 
You don't own my time. You don't own my thoughts. You know, it's us breaking free from this system. And they have had ownership over us. They have manipulated the shit out of people. And they still are. Every single second that they can, they still are. But, you know, now it's, uh, today's is already February 1st. I mean, we got a snowstorm coming in. <laughs> it's like it's freaking February. Oh my gosh. It's, I don't know. I would kind of, it wouldn't even do any good. Like if you had a farmer's almanac and you could go in and check and see. I just, I feel certain that, you know, um, winter's not supposed to be this long over here where I'm at. <laughs> it's just, you know, they're so intent on manipulating the weather. It's so nutty. You know, they just are finishing that storm over on the East Coast. And no telling how, you know, how big that has been. The only thing I'd seen was a lot of people, it was some sort of blizzard. A lot of people didn't have power, which, you know, they love to do. They love to freeze us to friggin' death. It's good times for them. And, um, and they probably, you know, what's really sick is they probably have their whole Las Vegas gambling thing going on. You know, how many people you think will kill on this one? How many people you think will die during this? Well, if we do this, what do you think? Will happen? You know, they're just, um, they, these people are just sick. I, and one of the things too, speaking of sick, is that how many people are going to, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have any idea what's going on, you know, and they're trusting. And, you know, I can't imagine trusting the government, but, you know, the government has convinced a lot of people that they are the ones to trust. So I just, I can't imagine what that is going to be like for these people who have participated wholeheartedly, trusting them and, you know, injecting chemicals and whatever, you know, telling us all, trust the government, do what the government says, you know, and then, um, and then they find out. It's like, that is where we're going to have a lot of really angry, angry people. And just remember, it doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good to project your anger out on them. You know, they are, for one thing, their whole reign of terror is ending. Their time is up. It's cosmic. It's a cycle. Their cycle is ending. So it doesn't do any good. I mean, you got to process the pain, but don't get stuck in it. You know, don't get all caught up. And, you know, I can't believe they, they did this to me. And, you know, now I've got this or that. You know, just remember, when we get to the med beds, a lot of these things will be solved. But you also have to be in a good head space to go in a med bed. You can't be in this um, because it's all based, like, with vibration and stuff. It's uh, all about the quantum system we're going to be going into. And when the technology is released, like, there's so much technology that's been withheld from us. And the stuff that I'm just is the medical, of course, because of how many people that they've just continually let die and how much pain and suffering there's been when they've had all of this um, technology. They just withheld it from us. And that is where I have said all along. That's where I think the people are going to really, really get pissed and get really angry, especially people whose kids have died and, you know, spouses and parents i mean there's a lot of unnecessary death that has occurred you know and is still occurring and is going to continue for a bit until we you know get them out of our hair and um you know i i mean february 2nd is supposed to be some other big moon phase you know and all of that if you go in and watch the astrology people and they talk about them you know, I think that all this stuff is happening. It's just, you know, we want like grand scale. We want to see something big, you know, and a lot of the stuff is subtle and it's in different areas. So, you know, we're not seeing it all yet, but it is definitely coming where we're going to start seeing it all. And, you know, for some people, it's going to be a welcome relief, but for others, it's going to be a shock and uh, a lot of anger and being sad and you know the we just as a as a collective we just don't want to, and I don't want to be like heartless like you know well I processed it <laughs> I've been processing this stuff all along so you know let go of it you know we can't be like that you know we gotta let everybody have their time to process 
because we, I mean, everybody needs to grow from this. This is what it's all about is for their soul to have this big um, growth situation during this time. So, um, you know, that's, it's necessary to have to face these traumatic things and uh, deal with them. It's just, you know, while we have so many people who aren't quite mentally healthy, then, you know, they can get really stuck. Rage can feel good. It's a release. Anger feels good. It's a release. Um, but it's out of control. You know, it's not control. You know, this is about mastering emotions. About, you know, and that's not about being an uptight control freak. That's about figuring out how to find balance. To recognize when you're going out of balance in one direction. How to pull it back in so you can find balance. And it's not... You know, so you don't just go out and purge your anger out on everybody else. But it is for yourself. Because when you do go out and purge your anger out on everybody, then you are causing more pain. And then you are going to feel that on top of your other pain. So, you know, it's like you're you're complicating your own pain. You're, you're just building it into a bigger pile. So, um, and, uh, you know, I... I don't even know how to tell people how to process some of this stuff, you know. If you've gone and you, you know, lined up and did your whole family and then, you know, people are dying and you find out that, you know, that they did it on purpose. They were, you know, the chemicals in our food and in our air and in our water wasn't fast enough, you know. They really wanted to hurry and wipe a bunch of us out real quick. So, and, uh, you know, that's going to be shocking. I know people, <laughs> they are not seeing this coming at all. Not at all. And I don't know how everybody's going to process it. And it's going to be uh, painful. You know, you went and you did it. And then, you know, your kid and now has a heart condition. You know, that's what you need to process. And, uh, you know, to feel the pain and to process it, to get to a healthy place. The whole thing is, is so many people get stuck in pain, they get stuck in suffering. Like it, it, it feels good to just stay in this sus of a mess. You know, it's just a, it's, it's just a big old pool of, it is the swamp, you know? You don't wanna be in their swamp. You wanna pull out of that swamp and take ownership of the time we have left, which, you know, is gonna be a lot of time. I mean, once they bring out this, uh, the med beds and stuff, like you, it, it, death is going to be very different. <laughs> it's going to be very, very different very soon. And uh, pain and suffering will be a thing of the past. It'll be something that we talk about. Remember back when? And it'll be something that we pass on the stories of this time to our grandkids. And, grand, you know, we got to keep these stories going. We got to keep free from control and tyranny. You know, that's what um, humans need to be free. Um, you know, you need to, once you can recognize your own power and your own abilities and you process the pain and stuff, like you come into your own. And that's what we need everybody to get to. This opportunity is for everybody to get to do that. But we need everybody to do that. But the whole thing is that everybody who does it will be the ones who go into the new age. The ones who don't do it, like, I, like I've said, you know, if they haven't processed their pain and baggage and stuff, then they will go back into lives to do that. It won't go into this cool, new, super fantastic. But they won't know, you know, it's something I think they're going to slate their clean slate and put them into where they think they were always in that place and always living this new life, you know. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of creepy about, you know, if consciousness, if you don't have all your faculties about your own consciousness, your consciousness can be very tricked, you know. We're seeing it happen. They're doing it all the time, and Stella is just going to keep on crying. She went in there um, this morning, and she got on the bed, and I don't know why now. Sometimes she'll just lay in there crying. She wants me to come in and um, talk to her so she can get off the bed. I don't know. She's very emotional. 
She's more like a person than she is a dog. Um, except for she has these really clumsy things. If she could do more with these. So, anyways, let's get, go get her. I probably will be back to talk about some stuff because, um, you know, I was kind of haphazard all over the place. But I am, I am thinking I might do one of those fish just to kind of see, like, is there parasites in this fish? And um, I still, I couldn't read the little writing and see if it was farm-raised or fresh. But it's from Norway, and I don't know all their rules. And, uh, and then the other fish is from New Zealand or something. The tuna fish uh, was from New Zealand. So, and then the gulf shrimp. So, I don't know. The gulf shrimp, it should be, you know, the restrictions that we have in this country. But, I don't know. If they're farm raising, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, we just... We just got to get out of this system where they control what we consume because they don't have our best interest in mind. And uh, they know how to control our minds if we don't know how to do it ourselves. So anyways, got to get to this. Talk to you later. Bye.